So not too long ago, I did a Scareclaw deck profile here on the channel because I've been slowly falling in love with the deck. I think the deck is so fun and can really be competitive in today's format. But one thing I noticed was that there is the ability to play the Adventure Package and Adventure Scareclaw is actually a very real deck. So that's what I'm going to be bringing you guys in today's video, Adventure Scareclaw how the deck really synergizes together and how you can put up boards that are almost like unbreakable, I would say, but on top of that, set you up to be able to OTK, which is absolutely insane. I'm gonna be showing you guys Scareclaw Adventure in today's video. Let's get right into it. All right, so just before we get into the deck profile, I do wanna say that I've been loving Scareclaw so much and the addition of the adventure package makes this deck so powerful. They synergize randomly so well together, Water Enchantress being a level three, which is actually really relevant. On top of that, her being able to summon herself to become Link Fodder, getting you to the token and then you hear Griffin Rider, which is gonna put up another layer of disruption. I think that's really cool and I think these two decks synergize so well together. So let's just get into it right now and I'm gonna talk about kind of how they all synergize, right? So we're playing three Acro, three of the Astra as well as two Balone. We cut down Balone to two because this only does really the piercing damage for you and it's not really the best one to start with unlike the other two over here. So that's why we're just playing the two Balone. But again, with all of these different names, you're more than likely to see one of them and really all you need to do is see one of them to get all your combo started. We're also only on two Rykart. We're not on three Rykart in this list. And the reason we're not on three Rykart is because one, the level three does matter in terms of your Triheart. Triheart can only recur the level three Scareclaw monster so you can't really recur the Scareclaw Rykart over here. But it does really provide a lot of different things for you it lets you search a spell trap which is really important and of course you have a plethora of those but on top of that you can also get to it with rota which is why we're just playing the two right card you could technically in theory just play three right card and no rota or play three right card and a rota and then you can make this deck 43 cards you guys can do that as well i just thought two is perfectly fine this is all you really needed it also helps you get into your baron de floor because it's level four paired with your level six visa star frost over here we're just playing the one gets you into baron which is really nice visa is also a really powerful extender for you especially if you get hand trapped on the light heart and you don't have access to right phobia if you open the visa star frost if you're able to get the visa star frost then you're going to be able to do a lot of your other combos so you're playing the one visa it's not super important in this deck but it is really powerful when it does come up and you usually search it when you have a lot of your other combo pieces in your hand already right so we're playing the one visa star frost we're also playing two scareclaw castra as well as three fenrir the reason you have to be playing three fenrir obviously is just it in itself is so powerful going second it's a board breaker for you going first it's another layer of disruption for you so it's really powerful in that sense but unlike other decks where Fenrir just searches Fenrir. Fenrir can actually search Scareclaw Caster in this deck and that becomes really powerful because one, he can attack in defense position. Two, he can negate effects of monsters that activate essentially that have done battle with a Caster or a Scareclaw monster. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically you attack with a Caster or attack with a Scareclaw. If a monster effect were to activate, he would be able to negate that, which is really powerful as well. And he's an extender for you, right? So two of the Scareclaw Caster, three of the Fenrir, of course, self-explanatory for the Fenrir, very powerful card. And then for hand traps, we're playing three Ash, 3 DD Crow and 3 Imperm. I just think these are the best hand traps to be playing in the main deck for today's format. Droll and Lockbird is really powerful as well, but I just think DD Crow is a lot more generic into pretty much everything right now. Every deck in the metagame does require its graveyard to a certain extent, and DD Crow helps play around that, right? So 3 Ash, 3 DD Crow, as well as 3 Imperm. Moving on to the spells here, we are playing 2 of the Rake Phobia. We're not playing 3. The only reason you're not playing 3 is essentially as soon as you get to Lightheart, you're able to get to this, and playing 3 just becomes a little bit of overkill, so that's why we're only playing the 2 Rake Phobia. Rake Phobia also lets you search a visa starfrost or a scareclaw monster to your hand and it does help you in a lot of other ways as well not just searching a card because one it makes your opponent's monsters lose 100 attack and defense i think up to the number of defense position monsters on the field and then if you have three or more defense position monsters or total on the field there's three or more you can target a card your opponent controls and destroy it which is really powerful as well so i do like the two rake phobia i think this is all you're going to need we're also playing two arrival you could cut this down to one but i actually chose to play two i think two arrival makes a lot of sense in this deck because you you do need that extra extender and if you do draw into one of these then with your right card instead of searching arrival you can search a twin saw you can search a straddle or a defang kind of depending on the situation that you're in and i do like playing two of this because it's also protection for you while it's in the graveyard so that's really important as well we're playing the one straddle as well as the one defang you don't need more than one it doesn't help you facilitate your combos it really just helps you once you kind of have all your combos going you get into this it's another added layer of protection disruption etc etc right so that's why we're just playing the one on one and we're playing the one of the reinforcements 
into the army, like I said earlier, for the Reichardt. One Foolish Burial. Foolish Burial, a lot of the time, can actually send a Scareclaw monster to the graveyard. Again, sometimes you do need some graveyard setup with this deck, but the card that this sends a lot of the time is your Water Enchanter to the graveyard so you can get your adventure plays going. And then lastly, we're also playing the one Twin Saw. Twin Saw is essentially like Sword Sword Blackout. Pop one, pop two on your opponent's side of the field. Very powerful in that sense as well. And if you control a Visa Starfrost, it banishes them rather than them going to the graveyard. And then if you control a Link 3 or higher monster, or I guess if one is just on the field in general, you can banish it from the graveyard and then neither player can activate effects of Link monsters on the field. So it kind of stuns your opponent as well in that sense. You don't really use that graveyard effect too, too often, but it does come up here and there. So Twin Saw is very powerful. And then we are playing the adventure package, like I said earlier, three Water Enchantress, one of the Griffin Rider, two Rite of Aramisir, one Fateful Adventure, as well as one Draco back. I'm only on two Rite of Aramisir because I think it's a little bit redundant. Once you get one of these engines going, you don't really want to keep seeing the rights. So I just really like having two right. I'd prefer having three Water Enchantress. And the reason I like having three Water Enchantress is because if this card is in your hand, not only are you going to be able to get to your right, but let's just say you already have your adventure package going. You have your token on your side of the field, all that good stuff. At least this becomes an extender for you and it helps facilitate a lot of your link plays, right? So I really like the three Water Enchantress. I think this is a perfect number over here. 42 cards in the main deck is perfectly fine because it's very consistent and there is a lot of redundancy or there is a little bit of redundancy in this deck because if you see the Rake Phobia and you see the Light Heart, then it's kind of like, okay, well, we get the second Rake Phobia in our hand, we get multiple cards. So the really good thing about playing 42 is you're not really seeing doubles of the cards that you don't want to see doubles of, right? I really like this number. I think it's been very consistent for me. Now, moving on to the extra deck, we are playing three of the Light Heart, one of the most important cards in your extra deck to be playing. Two of the Tri Heart, of course, we could be playing three, but I actually only chose to play two because with this deck, you're going to be going a lot of the time for game or pushing for as much damage as possible right away. So you don't really want to be in situations where you need the third Tri Heart. I will say, the reason we're playing three light heart is because if your first light heart gets negated right I i'm going to kind of show the small little combo if you have a visa star frost in hand what you can do is so let's say you normal summon your astra you make light heart light heart gets negated to search your rake phobia you can use visa star frost pop your light heart because it's a different type and attribute it's a dark beast warrior while this is a light warrior right so you can pop the light heart summon the Vizas. Now, Lightheart has a graveyard effect where it can summon itself to the side of the field. So you summon back the Lightheart. And then to make a Lightheart, you just need a Scareclaw monster or a Vizas Starfloss. And because this is a Scareclaw monster, you can use the one you summon back from the grave to make a second one. And the first effect to search a Rake Phobia is not a hard ones per turn, which means now you can search the Rake Phobia with this. So that's why we're playing three of this because sometimes you will need two just to get to your first combo going, right? So the third one is kind of like your second one, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense, right? So that's why we're playing three of this and only two of this. We're playing the one Link Spider for any situation that we get Nibiru. Link Spider becomes really important because Triheart needs effect monsters, so you can't really do anything with that token. So that's why I like the Link Spider because at least it makes that token usable for you. We're playing the one Asa. Of course, all these monsters are Earth. Asa becomes really nice in some matchups where they're playing Fenrir, and you can just take your opponent's Fenrir, which becomes really powerful. One Car Sheep, it combos really well with the Vicious Astroloud. So we're playing the one Car Sheep, one IP Mascarina, one Selene. Selene helps you to get into Axis Code or into Apo. So that's why I like playing the one. Selene and you can make Selene of course because you are playing the water enchantress who is a spellcaster for you right so that's why again I really like the water enchantress because this as an extender for you helps you get into Selene which helps you get into a link four which is really nice as well you guys could technically also play unicorn here as well kind of up to you but I just really like Selene just being able to automatically go into access code or apple depending on the situation you're in one SP little knight again I know this deck actually is pretty fairly budget I would say especially with the reprints so if you guys don't have access to SP I will say in this spot play the unicorn instead because you can go ip mascarina into unicorn still and have that form of disruption as well right so sp little knight of course is ideal if you guys don't have the sp little knight you guys can play unicorn as well one access code and apple like i talked about one bear in the floor doesn't come up too often but there's two situations where it does if you have a visas plus a right card you guys can make a baron because this is a six and a four but if you have a fenrir plus an ash you can also make a baron technically that doesn't happen too often but you know just wanted to give you guys that option as well and i think it's really nice having that backup option in case you do have these two cards on the field over here and then one vicious astral out of course you're going to make this with your visas as well as your right heart so the really cool thing is if you do get these two guys on your side of the field what you can do is you can make a baron now that they're in your graveyard you can banish them to summon a vicious astral out and then now that you have a vicious astral out if you have something like a cross sheep on your side of the field you get the special summon a monster back from your graveyard and then that's how you kind of start to link climb right so it's really cool in that sense so that's why i really like playing the one vicious astral out and lastly i want to show you guys a side deck keep in mind side deck is always going to be up to personal preference and it's always going to be up to what your locals is right right so if you're building this deck and you go to your locals and your locals is all combo players side for combo decks if your locals is all backward players 
Sorry for backward decks. This is just kind of like a skeleton that covers a little bit of everything. So we're playing three Gamma Seal. I just like playing Gamma Seal. I'm a big fan of the Kaijus because anytime your opponent puts up a monster you just don't want to deal with, boom, slap a Kaiju on there. You're good to go. This deck has no problem getting over Kaijus. So I really like Gamma Seal. We're playing the one of Harpies and two Lightning Storm for back row matchups. Another card for back row matchups is Evenly Match, but Evenly Match is also really good against front row matchups that make really wide boards. It's also really good against Rescue Ace right now. It's also really good against any deck that's playing the adventure package. I feel like not a lot of people are playing the adventure package, but you know, just in case it comes up, your opponent has a token, you evenly match them, force a token on this side of the field alone, right? So evenly match is really powerful in that sense. And then for going first, we're playing three D barrier as well as three solemn judgment. I just think generic cards going first are the most important. If you know you're going first against certain matchups, you guys can side out DD Crows. You can side out some of the engine over here. It doesn't really matter, but you know, setting up a small board, even with just a couple like Scareclaw monsters, a twin saw, a Fenrir maybe, and then a judgment, you're pretty much winning that game always anyway, right? So judgment becomes really powerful and D barrier is just auto win against a lot of different decks. So that's it for the deck over here. Again, very fun deck. I think this deck can actually low key be a little bit competitive, especially taking it to a locals. I think if people are not prepared for it, one, they're not prepared for Scareclaw, but if you're also not prepared for the adventure package, it can catch a lot of people off guard and then you can win a lot of games with this deck. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Scareclaw Adventure for today's format. The really cool thing about this deck is honestly two things. One, the synergy is so powerful. It can put up a lot of different layers of disruption, which is really nice. And the second thing is I feel like not a lot of people are prepared for the adventure package. So when people are not prepared for it, it can do a lot of things helping you set up boards, but it also can help you extend an OTK, which is really powerful as well. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We are uploading every single day Day in the month of December. So make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned to all of that. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.